Hello everyone, welcome. We are kicking off day two of the 12 days of Christmas at CCDIY. My name is Misty Leonard, some of you guys know me. Um, any of those that are new and haven't met me before, haven't joined a live with me, I am one of the team, um, well, I am one of the brand ambassadors for Team CCDIY. So I do a lot of helping with things here in the group um, and I get to do a lot of different stuff with the products. So hop on, say hello, and tonight we are going to make some hot chocolate mugs with nice and thick and some dispersion colors. Hello, I see a few people are joining. Do you all love my festive glasses? I figured we'd get in the spirit tonight. I can't see very well, so they're not gonna stay long, but they are fun and I found them while I was cleaning, so welcome. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna get you pulled up here on the iPad so that I can see comments whenever I turn the camera down. Are you guys excited? I've got my Christmas sweater and my cats. These are my cats and my festive glasses because we're day two of the 12 days of Christmas. You all love it. I'm feeling very festive. <laughs> okay. Adjust my glasses here. All right, so I see a few people are hopping on. Um, I'm gonna keep my glasses on to tell you all the winners. We have three winners um, for giveaways. The, the first one is Brie Musser, M-U-S-S-E-R. You will email Mindy with an I at counterculturediy.com. Nina Riviera, you're the winner number two. And Desiree Lugo. You're winner number three. You all email Mindy with an I at Counterculture DIY and she will get you hooked up with some prizes. If you guys know the winners, if you're friends with them, tag them so that they can know that they won so they know that they need to email. <laughs> they are adorable glasses, aren't they, Barbara? Love them. Okay, I gotta take them off because they're hurting my eyes. We're gonna have to go back to real glasses so that I can see. Ha. Hello everyone who is hopping on. I just announced the winners um, to email. If you guys um, are just hopping on, we are starting our second day of the 12 days of Christmas with using nice and thick. We're gonna make some hot chocolate mugs. So, um, do you guys have any quick questions? Is anybody doing this with me? I'm not a huge talker. I know Holly got on here yesterday and she's really good with words and it's super hard to follow her um, just because she's amazing. And then here you get Misty. Wah, wah. All right. So I've prepped my mugs. I'm actually doing mason jars because we're going to Silver Dollar City and going to see a bunch of Christmas lights. So I thought it would be fun to have some mugs for the kids to take. My grandkids, not my kids, my grandkiddos. So I went ahead and um, just decided to do these because I had them already prepped. I can't word good. You all, it's kind of embarrassing. Hey, Amanda, we found out today that we are from the same hometown, which is super weird. It's a crazy world that you would meet somebody through resin and tumblers that lived in the same town as you, probably at the same time as you. Crazy. Oh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay. You're doing geodes right now, so no hot chocolate mugs. I do have grandchildren. I have two. I have two. A four-year-old and a 10-month-old? 11-month-old? Yeah, I got grandkids. I know. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. 
Okay, get, gotta get loose so we can make hot chocolate mugs. I don't like, I don't like lives. So you all, it's hard for me. This is really hard. I'm, I'm, I will say I feel a little bit more comfortable because some of my friends are here, but um, it's, it's tough. I'm not a live person, but okay. So back to the task at hand, hot chocolate mugs. We prepped these, glittered them, and I don't know if you guys can see Sterling Snow. Uh, I used it. I did. I put Sterling Snow all over my house, all over that area. It's probably still whoosh, sprinkling. Um, what was I saying? I used Sterling Snow use sterling snow on my cup, which I'm not a huge fan of because it gets everywhere, but it is gorgeous. Can you guys see that? Look how beautiful that is. Sterling snow. Um, if you buy it, I recommend do not take it out of the bag. Get a little scooper or a spoon or a popsicle stick and Dip it out, mix it in your epoxy, and put it on that way. If you open the bag and put it in a jar, which I made the mistake of doing, it covers your entire house, and you'll probably eat it along with wash it. Um, you'll wear it every day. I My yard is covered in it because I put some on outside, and every time my husband mowed the grass, Sterling Snow just... That is crazy. So don't take it out of the bag. That's my tip for today. Do not take Sterling Snow out of the bag. Leave it in the bag. And then the other thing that um, I talked, I mentioned yesterday. So Holly was a um, huge fan, huge fan of the squeeze bottles. And I'm not so much. So if you guys are sad that you have the squeeze bottles, don't be. Don't be sad about it at all because um, the FIFO or FIFO bottles are my jam. I absolutely love these. I do not squeeze out of them. And if I replace them or when I first get them in, I take a little bit of facet, maybe one to two mLs each part and mix it up. And I just run it right along the rim inside and on this plastic part. Screw it on, set it upside down like this, let it cure. Once it's cured, two hours, hour and a half, then I flip it back over and I fill my bottle up. Now, how I get my resin out is with these big guys. Hey, CCDIY, I don't know who you are. It's always a mystery of who's running the page. These guys are 60 ml syringes. So I use this in here and draw it out. You have perfect measurements. Um, you don't have to worry about wasting two cups when you're mixing your um, A and B. You don't have to put them in each cup and then measure, look, eyeball, make sure that they're right. This way, you draw it up to whatever you need. Um, for us Tumblr artists, we're not using down to the 60 very, very often. Um, if I'm doing like coasters or something like that and I need bigger amounts, I will take and pour straight out of the bottle. I don't squeeze out of this ever. Pour it straight out of the bottle. I've got some big cups. I think I got them at Walmart. They're a little plastic and they have measurements all up and down. Hey, Morgan. <laughs> uh, they have measurements on them so that I just pour in, use my measurement, and mix it up that way if I'm using a bigger amount. I use only these with these syringes for the rest of my stuff. Um, I can say I've been doing resin for four and a half years, maybe. Um, 
and I switched over to these a few years ago. I have never mixed, I've never had, I say this now, let me find some wood. I have never had a mix that's been off um, and I can mix really small amounts. If Amy Sadler was on here, she would tell you that they're like tiny baby amounts, but I have not had an issue with mixes being off and I think a lot of it has to do with this because I'm mixing exactly to the line. So don't be sad if you have the squeeze FIFO FIFO bottles. They're good. All right, back to the task at hand because I get super distracted. Our sparkly cup, Sterling Snow. I have it taped off because it's a mason jar. So I don't want my drips to be up where the threads are. Now you guys can see on this one, I paint my rim because sometimes whenever you drip, the weight of the drip will pull down and you can see behind it. It's kind of like base coating your tumbler for your glitter, same concept. Base paint the top of your tumbler the color that you're gonna do your drip. The color that I painted it was with my dispersion color. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tip you guys down. I am for some reason not getting comments on my iPad, so let me see if I can pull it up on my laptop over here. Uh, hopefully there are some uh, folks from CCDIY that if they catch any questions or anything that I do miss, hopefully somebody's here to answer them. Hold on, we gotta find it. Oh, there you are. Okay. Jessica, it will be available for replay. So if you do miss it, um, you can catch the replay later. I will save this in the group um, and I will possibly put it up on my YouTube channel as well. So if anybody misses anything, you would always come back and watch it. So, all right, I'm going to tip you guys down. And... There is a little bit of a lag. So let me see. To make sure you guys can see my clean mat. Okay. So all I did to paint was take a small paintbrush and a little bit of dispersion color. And I didn't have anything handy, so I just dropped a little bit on this piece of duct tape that I found on my table. So I just put a little tiny amount here. And just paint the rim. And like I said, I do this because if you've ever done a drip before, you can, it doesn't always happen, but you can get a little bit thinner on your drip right at the rim. And that will show through the color that's your base color. So if I do this brown and I don't cover this with paint and my drip gets a little bit thin, you're gonna be able to see the white. Straighting it, yeah, I'm straighting it. I'm painting it straight onto my epoxy cup. How far you go down, you just kinda wanna eyeball how far you think your drip is. Not, you don't wanna paint all the way down to where your drip is going, but at least paint down to what you think is gonna be the thinnest part of your drip. And this is what it looks like after it dries. So dispersion colors do not have binders in them. So they are not designed 
to use in replace of paint. You, whatever you use this on, you have to come back in and cover it up with a coat of epoxy because otherwise it's going to wipe off. Um, if, if you touch it, it's not going to wipe onto my hand completely like it's wet, but you can see I do have a little bit of color just from touching it. So whatever you put this on, you have to make sure that you come in and coat it with some epoxy. So now the dispersion colors are game changers. They have seriously been um, a lifesaver for me. I use them all the time. All right, so I'm going to get my cup, and somebody had, I think it was Lauren, had asked about amounts because she did some cups for some drips and had a bunch of leftover. So for me, what I have found works best is I use 10 ml. I'm using artist resin. 10 ml each part. And that should give me enough to do two cups. And I just have a little Dixie cup. So that was part B. I always put part B in first. The reason that I do that is because it is the thinner of the two mixes. And I find that it's easier to mix my parts together if I have my B in first. Um, the A is, since it's a little bit thicker, it does not stick to the sides or the bottom. I still want to scrape it and make sure that I'm getting everything mixed together, but I find that I don't have to scrape as much. So that was it. My two parts in one cup. When I'm doing my drips, I like to use a wider popsicle stick. just because that helps me mix in the nice and thick. It's kind of cold here in my workspace, so my part A is pretty thick, which is good for the drip because you want a thicker mix. So when I mix, and Holly talked about it yesterday, I don't worry about the bubbles because whenever I put it on my cup, I can torch it and all those bubbles, if I'm using the correct torch, are gonna come out, so I don't have to worry about them. I don't mix crazy to where it's milky and white, but I just kind of fold it over. And if you pull it up, you can see there will be striations or ribboning where your resin is not mixed together. And I continue doing that until I see that it's clear. And it's a little bit hard for you guys to see on camera, but it's already clear. I know the directions tell you to mix for three minutes. Um, and I totally get that. If you're mixing big amounts, it is going to take you three minutes. Us mixing five to 10 mLs, each part is not going to take three minutes to, to mix. Um, I do not, I use the same syringe um, for each FIFO, FIFO bottle. So each bottle has its own syringe. I don't, 
interchange them because they would mix then. Or they would cure. It would cure and I would just waste a syringe. So each bottle has its own syringe. And what I do, I have a little caddy. Um, I can take a picture of it. But what I do is I take and wrap a black piece of tape around my part B on every single one um, that is a part B. There's another part B. And they each have their own compartment. So I have my ultra clear, my regular fast set, I have my artist resin, my medium and my thin all have their own bottles. They all have their own compartment in the little caddy. So they're always separate. I pull them out and then um, put them right back in that little compartment so that they're never, I don't ever set them anywhere but in their caddy. That's about the only thing that I am consistent with in my life. Okay, so like I said, my resin is completely mixed. Oh, hello, Barry. Hey, Brandy. And you guys, I, I get super focused when I'm working, so I'm trying to catch comments and work at the same time. This typically takes me, I can mix up my resin, mix my nice and thick, drip it on my cup, and maybe 15, 20 minutes tops be done. When I come on here live and do it with you guys, I talk and I get distracted, and it usually takes me a lot longer, so... Um, there's that. Okay, so when I go to scoop, your very first scoop, you can do just about as much as you want. And just fold it in, kind of the same way that I was mixing my resin. With this, you will notice it's a little bit clumpy when you first put it in. Don't worry, that is perfectly normal. I add my color at the very end. Um, when you add your color, so the, the nice and thick is white. So when you add it into your resin, see how it's giving it a milky look? So when you add it to your resin, you are not only thickening it, but you're also changing it from a clear to a little bit of a, a creamy, milkier look. So what I do is I wait to the very end to add my colorant to it so that I get the exact color that I want. If I add my color to the beginning and then I continue adding the nice and thick, all it's gonna do is lighten up my color. And then I'm gonna have to turn around. If I don't like the way it looks at the end, then I'm gonna have to turn around and add more. So I wanna make sure before I add another scoop that I have all my clumps broken up. The way that I do that is I take my popsicle stick and just mash it right on the sides. And that will break up any clumps. And you can see So then I'm gonna add another scoop and I know it feels like you guys add a ton, but you're, I mean, this stuff is so fluffy. It's almost like magic that even if you use it, I've actually used this jar a couple of times on cups. Um, even though you're using it, it almost feels like you're not using any out of the jar because it just magically appears. I do not use it with fast set. Um, I don't like doing my drips with fast set. One, I am not the fastest worker in the world. Um, and two, I don't like to be rushed. Because fast set in a cup 
you typically, if you have it in the, in the cup, um, you have anywhere between 18 to 22 minutes before it gets hot. And I say this because I've, I've timed it and I know if your mix is correct and you have enough room in your cup, 18 to 20 minutes will get you, um, to the point where that 20, 22 minute mark, you're starting to get hot. Um, adding the nice and thick, I think speeds that up a little bit because you're thickening it. So you're limiting the movement that it has in that cup. Um, so that definitely limits your time. This product, the nice and thick, was designed to not affect the way that your epoxy cures and give you the thickness. That way you can control the movement of it. So you can add as much as you want to get it as thick as you want, or you can add as little. So if you want really long runny drips, like for the ice cream, you can add just a little bit and let it run. I've also seen some people let their resin sit up for just a little bit before they do it. And that kind of starts the curing process and then you add the nice and thick and you don't use quite as much. I personally would forget about it and I would have a cup with a chunk of epoxy, cured epoxy in it. And I've done that before. So the consistency that I am looking for and the way that I test it is I will take a scoop after I've added a little bit into it and I will run it right on the side of my cup. And you can see how it's running down. That's what it's going to do on your cup. So when you get it to where it has very slow, limited movement, that's when I add my color to it. And I just keep stirring and mixing. And it is powder, so if you put a big scoop of it, you can kind of see some of the powder floating in the air. Danielle, you hoard your nice and thick. Me too. Don't tell Mindy or Barry. But you just never know. You can't run. I can't. You can't run out. This stuff is like powdered gold. So you can see how it's changed colors and it's picked up a white creamy look and you can also see how that drip starts to slow down so I've got it on my another way to test on your popsicle stick see how you just have it's just slow so we're getting there hello to everybody just joining See, I'm looking at comments and I just strung. Whoops. And if you get to the point where you think it's kind of getting thick and you're not for sure, maybe it's still a little bit too runny, you can add a smaller scoop. It's always easier to add more. You can't take it away. Two hundred and eighty eight thousand three hundred and ninety two cups is what we need the amount of nice and thick I get you i'm I'm with you. I feel that deep in my soul. That's how many cups I need to be able to do with my nice and thick. I need that many jars. What if something happens and well, we get ice here in Missouri. We get lots of ice. So my thought, if I get iced in, I can make 288,000 drip cups. I can't do anything with them, but I can make them. All 
right. So again, still just a little bit too much movement with it. So I'm gonna add just another scoop. Now remember, whenever you add your, I say remember, when you add your colorant, it's going to thicken it just a little bit more as well. Yes, Bethany, I am in Missouri. So see, our drip has very little movement. It's still moving, but not much. And it's super hard. I need to get a colored cup. Amanda, I think that's like the number one lesson in life. You can always add more, but you can't take away. Just life lessons. Deep thoughts. with M.D. Leonard. <laughs> Bethany, where at in Missouri are you? So Amanda and I just figured out today that she is from Jeff City, which is where I'm at. I was born in Joplin, where counterculture is located. And see, this is another reason that I don't use Facet because I get easily distracted. Um, for me, if I'm using Facet, I have to be 100% laser focused on what I'm doing and one cup at a time. So it's pretty slow moving. Um, I think I missed a question. Hang on just a second, guys. No, you don't have to work, um, Brindy. So when you're using nice and thick, you're not changing the curing process of your resin epoxy. You are only thickening it. So you are creating more control with the product. It will still take... Um, I want to say it takes usually around this five to six hour mark um, and I can add another layer of resin over top of it uh, but I usually just let it sit. I don't, um, when I'm working with resin, I typically wear a respirator which is nearly impossible to do when you're doing on a live. Um, so you probably will only see me do lives with uh, using the drips because for one, you can't talk with a respirator. Nobody can hear you. Um, I just, I'm very careful with it. And once I use it, um, once I put it on my cups, I have a ventilation system. So I take and shut my room off and go do something else while it's curing. So I don't usually come back to it and do anything until it's completely cured. Now, don't get me wrong. I've snuck in and, and done a few things or I have done a few things, but um, I typically put it on, walk away. It's the last thing that I do before... I, I leave my room. So you can see as we've sat here and did our deep thoughts, life lessons, it's pretty thick but still has some movement. Rosetta, didn't you have an issue with your husband yesterday? Making you late or something too? 
Okay, so now we are going to add our colorant. Ooh, St. Charles. Okay, I know where that's at. I'm not geographically um, inclined, so I don't know where a lot of things are. I know where my... I've, I, I'm telling you all, I've lived in this city. I don't know that it's really a city. For 21 years. I grew up here as a child. Um, left. Now I take that back. Born and raised in the southern Missouri. Moved here. Grew up here. Then moved away. Came back as an adult. So I know the I know the area pretty well. I I know where my gym is. I know where Chick Fil A is. And my work, and that's pretty much it. I, so I'm really challenged, but I do know where I know where St. Charles is. Okay, so that was roughly four drops. And I want it just a little bit darker. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff is a big small town. You are correct. Okay, um, the color that I'm using is rustic oak, and I totally missed a, um, what seemed like a um, pretty important color. Okay. Maybe, I don't think I can go back up. Um, I think it was Deb. Deb had a comment. If somebody can scroll back. Maybe um, if Barry or Mindy or Morgan's still on here and see what her question was because I cannot get it to scroll. Um, Lids, if you add too much colorant or too much thickener, you can get um, too thick of a consistency. Taylor, we are using nice and thick with regular artist resin and rustic oak colorant. We're doing hot chocolate cups. Hot chocolate drips. And I'm gonna go back and watch Miss Danielle's live on her toppers and my grandkids are gonna be extra with their whipped cream lids watching their Christmas lights. Oh, it's going to be so festive. I might wear my glasses and my cat sweater. Okay. So now we're ready. And this, all I do is I take again, back with the life lessons. I take a small amount and I start to run it right along the edge of my cup. If you use are using a regular cup with a lid on it, you don't have to worry too much about the tape, which is kind of a booger because I can't really see where I'm at. because I don't want to get it too far up over my tape and then have a huge chunk pull out. I probably should have just done a normal cup, but I was thinking how fun the whipped toppings would be on these little screw-off cups. It's little mason jars. So that's why I went with this one. Didn't think it through. But I've done drips on these before, so it's not a big deal. Just a little extra challenging for me. One, to remember to pull the tape, because that is a pretty serious problem I have. The white on this cup is sterling snow. It is. You all should go get some.
All right, now if you want some longer drips, you can take and kind of maybe bundle, bunch up your nice and thick mixture. So add a little bit more in that area. Now remember, we still had just a little bit of movement with our resin. So it will drip just a bit. It's not going to run all the way down to the bottom of your cup. I do not babysit my cups. I do not put them on the tumbler or on the tumbler on the turner after I put my drips on because nice and thick eliminates all of that. If you get it the right consistency, uh, once you put it on, you will get limited movement, but it is not going to drip and run all the way down your cup. And this was 10 mLs that I mixed. This is what I put on my cup so far. And like I said, it's going to move just a little bit. So I'm gonna set it aside and we're gonna do the other one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Those of you just joining, we painted the rim of our cup so that if our epoxy runs and thins at all around the rim, which if you've ever done a drip cup, you've probably had it happen. This eliminates you seeing the glitter in the back. So I just kind of swipe it on. I like my drips to be hearty and thick. Nice and thick, um, I don't recommend using with facet. Rachel, you love my cats? They're pretty sweet. It used to light up, but after washing it and washing the battery pack, you're not supposed to do that. It doesn't work anymore. I believe somebody asked where my where my mugs were from. The Steel Magnolia. I believe Nikki still carries the mason jar mugs. I'm making hot cocoa, hot chocolate mugs for the grandkids to take on their Christmas light looking adventure. So here's my cup. This is what's left. It's pretty empty. So we're gonna find a use for it on something somewhere.
Okay. So this was the first mug that I did and I've had it sitting up just like so over here in the corner and my drips have barely moved. That one I just added a little bit more to it because I want it to drip down further. I don't know if you guys can see. I am not um, going to put any sprinkles on these, but if I were to put sprinkles, what I would do is I would wait um, maybe an hour or so to where it's starting to get tacky, and then I would add them. I would not add them right away um, because if you do have any movement still, it's going to cause your sprinkles to move as well. And they might sink down into your epoxy. So I wait um, typically an hour or so. If you forget about it, which trust me, I am the queen of forgetting and you don't get back in time and it's cured, you can always take and kind of gloss up your cup with a thin coat of resin and add them that way. So you're not out anything if you do forget. Um, if you notice that you have some bubbles, you can hit it with your torch it is not going to affect the resin at all. You can hit it with your torch and that will pop any bubbles and then it just kind of levels itself out. So there are a few bubbles on there. Um, so I'll hit that with the torch real quick. But that's it. This is not going anywhere. I am not babysitting this. I'm going to finish this live. I'm gonna leave them sit right here on the table and I'm gonna go get Chick-fil-A and I'm gonna come back to them tomorrow. I'm not putting them on the turner. Um, I think that's the thing that a lot of people are just really get frustrated. Hang on guys, I'm gonna move you up so we can talk. Um, I think a lot of people get frustrated with doing drips. Hey guys again, because you have to babysit or you feel like you have to babysit. Um, you don't have to babysit with the nice and thick. I'm telling you all, these drips are not going anywhere. That one's adorable. That's so cute. Uh, they're not going anywhere. You, as long as you get them the right consistency. That one's pretty stinking cute too. Again, I'm not putting any... No, I'm not putting any sprinkles on these because I'm going to do whipped cream toppings. But um, if I were to do sprinkles, I would wait an hour or so and drop them in. I will pull the tape off. Um, I'm going to let it... I'll probably do it here once I get off the live because it's going to be a mess. I'm going to pull it off. And thank you, Mindy. Hang on. For those that missed the beginning, we're going to get festive on these 12 days of Christmas. I want to challenge everyone to get festive on your lives. There are going to be some really good lives coming up. So uh, look ahead in the events and see what you, like put it on your schedule every evening. Uh, the whip topping carry is Danielle Myers. She did one in the group. This is for everybody who missed my adorable glasses in the beginning. I can't see with them. <laughs> um, anyway, I get so distracted. So drips are done. Like I said, this is the first one that we did. It's not moving. Guys, it's not going anywhere. It's on there. Sterling Snow. 
Sterling Snow mixed in my epoxy. Nice and thick. Mixed in my epoxy. Then Rustic Oak mixed in my epoxy. I used Artist Resin for tonight to do the drips. Um, for my Sterling Snow, I am a procrastinator, so I did Fast Set. So we'll see how it works. I don't, I haven't had any issues with it. It's not recommended to use Fast Set on white cups, but I'm a rebel and these are for my grandkids. So I'll let y'all know. Guys, these are so stinking cute. All right, does anybody have any questions? Any questions that maybe I missed? Carrie, the only reason I know that is because um, I think somebody posted it in the group. I'd been dumping it, like pouring it out of the shaker, like normal glitter and Oh my goodness, no, you don't, do not. I said that in the very beginning. If you purchase, if you purchase Sterling Snow, which everybody should, everybody needs it in their life, do not take it out of the bag. Don't take it out of the bag. Don't put it in a shaker. Don't sprinkle it on anything or anywhere for that matter. Get a spoon or a popsicle stick Dip that baby in the bag, like open just the tiniest amount of that bag, just enough, and put it in your epoxy. That's the only way it can be used. But I've started using it, and so now it's everywhere. I'm just going to keep using it because my whole house is filled with it, and it's beautiful. But I am going to epoxy over my drips because I don't have a decal yet. I don't do my decal first. That's another thing. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, do your decal first and then you don't have to cover over it. If I am doing sprinkles, I cover over them anyway. So for me, I'm going to go over it again with another layer. So it doesn't really matter. Plus I can see exactly where I want it. So I have my drips a little bit less here. So I'm probably going to put my decal right in this area. that's it it is a we have a personal snow globe home we're getting ready to move and so we're probably going to put that on the listing like this is the only house in jeff city that is legit a glitter home like you come in here you're covered in glitter it's going to be a selling point <laughs> yes i will post uh final pictures in the group all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you for being a part of my live. I will post the final pictures um, probably, and it's probably going to be next week, I'm not going to lie, um, because I'm crazy busy right now. So, yes, yes, I live in Jeff City. Do you want to come by a glitter house in Jeff City? Jeff City, Missouri. It's the only glitter house in probably the state. I am, we're moving outside of Jeff. We're moving outside of the city limits towards um, Taos, Westphalia area. So it's close. I mean, it's like a 15 minute drive for me to work, which I'm not happy about, but it is. It'll be okay. It'll be nice. All right, any other questions before I hop off here? Um, for my decal, I do not prep I am doing water slide on this one, so it has a layer of resin already on it. So I'll just slap my water slide on it, let that dry, and then coat over the entire thing again. All right. Thank you all. Um, stay tuned. Tomorrow there will be another live. So go check out the events section so you can see what everything is coming up. And then I will be back uh, Tuesday whatever day the seventh is, two, in two days, Monday, one of those days, I'm going to be back and I'm going to show you guys how to ink on some coasters. So stay tuned. All right. Thank you all for joining. Have a good evening. Thank you, Counterculture, for everything that you guys do.